Hey, thanks for clicking on my face and checking out my channel. I'm John Stark from ActiveMovieGuy.com, and this is a review of Breaking. Uh, not, not too Electric Boogaloo, or actually not even the one that preceded that. This is the new one. This is the new break. <laughs> Very confusing. Um, believe me, I know. I, I get it too. These, t these movies with titles... Uh, that are just kind of generic. It becomes really hard to get people excited about. Did you see Breaking? And like, there's a film called what? What? What's it about? I don't know. Things breaking. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So uh, I'm a blind film critic, and I watched this with audio description. I actually rented this. I selected and chose this off of the iTunes Store. So I paid to watch this. It was Bleecker Street, and I couldn't remember where their films go in terms of uh, the future of it having audio description on a streaming service. Um, so I was like, I don't know if this is ever going to have. So sometimes when I see a film by a studio that I'm like, I don't know where this deal goes by, in, by some of those indie studios and they're willing to put audio description on it, I'll go ahead and rent it. Uh, especially with A24, because their films go to Showtime, and uh, while I had a lot of fun watching X without audio description, <laughs> which was a total waste of time, um, yeah, in general, uh, if you know where the films go, or don't go, or if they don't go anywhere, maybe they don't go to streaming services, I don't know. I don't know where Breaking is going to go on a streaming service, is my point, <laughs> so I wanted to watch it with audio description. Um... It's funny that we cannot trust... I have all these subscriptions and I can't trust my streaming services. Uh, so, yeah. So I, I rented this shit from iTunes. Which was fine. Because I was treated to... Um, a film. I was treated to also the final performance from Michael Kenneth Williams. Which... Uh, I do believe that's true. I, unless he has some other extraneous film out there. I did just... See Ed Asner in his last film recently in that Diary of a Wimpy Kid thing, which was like a year after he died. So I don't know, maybe Michael Kenneth Williams would just pop up in something later on that we didn't even know about. But um, this does have Michael Kenneth Williams among other people: Connie Britton, Jeffrey Donovan, Nicole Bahare, uh, Selena Slavia, who was in Orange Is New Black, is in this, um, and. Uh, but the big star here is John Boyega, who is fantastic in this film. This is a fantastic performance from John Boyega, and I don't know why enough people haven't talked about it. Um, like, he's not in the Oscar race, he's nothing. Like, nobody, everybody's just like, ah! I think it's because nobody saw this film. I think, honestly, that is, that's the big thing here, is that nobody saw this film. Um, the film itself is not great, I didn't love the film. Uh, we've we've had bank robbery films before. We've had these intense, uh, sort of like single location robbery films, and they all sort of play out differently. Um, Spike Lee did really well with Inside Man. Like we can use that as sort of like one of the benchmarks, right? Also, Dog Day Afternoon. Can't we can't not mentioned Dog Day Afternoon. So, a lot of times when directors come along with, ooh, I'm gonna rob a bank, <laughs> it's like, okay, but how are you going to make your film interesting? Uh, what is, what is it, what story are you trying to tell? Because if you're just gonna tell a generic bank robbery film, we have plenty of those. In many ways, Ambulance was that also this year. <laughs> Ambulance was just a smash and grab, go, and then the interesting part was the escape, not the bank robbery. But here, John Boyega holds up in the bank, um, and uh, you can tell that throughout the course of the film that he is, he's somebody that we've forgotten, that society has forgotten, and that's what the story is, and that's why Breaking Matters, is because it's about a veteran who has been denied his benefits and he is uh 
he's trying to provide for his family. He has a daughter that he loves a lot and calls while he's robbing the bank and, and keeps and you know, asks his daughter to pray for him. Uh, it's very emotional, but at the same time, he fought for his country and his country has just left him. Uh, they, he has no money in his account. He can't pay any of his bills, but he's supposed to be getting this money from the government. And, uh, he, he's been trying, we find out that he's been trying to get a hold of Veterans Affairs. And this is the only way that he knows how to be able to get anybody's attention. And he just wants what's owed him. He's not actually trying to rob the bank. He doesn't want the bank's money. He just wants his money. He wants the money that he was promised that he's owed as a veteran. And it's based on a true story. So I think it's it's really a compelling story when you get down to it. I don't think it was necessarily uh, written and directed in the best way possible. Um, the film becomes a little bit monotonous. Uh, we don't see enough... Uh, I'm not invested enough in the characters outside the bank uh, making anything happen. I barely even know the other characters in the bank. There's uh, character development is sort of a thing. It's it's almost like they don't really want you to know what's going on. Um, the film does kind of start abruptly, uh, almost immediately with the bank robbery. Like John Boyega just kind of walks in and movie goes uh and it's just a ride from there but when you do it when when you have very little setup uh i don't really know who these characters are i don't know who the characters inside the bank are i don't know who the characters outside the bank are i don't know who's good who's bad who's uh telling the truth who's lying um i'm having to find out all of this stuff sort of on the fly on the spot um who's who's interested who's not and a lot of that is is because they want you to believe that there's a possibility that John Boyega is crazy in this film, which is not necessarily the route to go. Uh, I think it, when you really uh, kind of throw all the other bullshit away and listen to his story and his core story, there are some flashes to his time served, um... And when you realize this is a veteran and then you think about how many other veterans we've left behind and you always hear those statistics about like homeless veterans and, and, uh, and here's one of them, you know, and this is their story and, and he's desperate and he just wants, he just really wants to be heard and he wants what he, what he's owed. <coughs> but unfortunately, um, that's not what he gets. So, um... And that's what makes Breaking sort of a little bit of an interesting uh, film that way. So uh, I think this this is a this is a film that had John Boyega not delivered as great of a performance as he does, I don't know that I would have recommended it necessarily the same. I think the rest of the cast is fine. It's just that the film isn't written in a way that benefits their acting abilities. They're all good actors. I love Nicole Bahari. I love Connie Britton. I think they're great. It was great to see Selena Slevia after um, Orange is the New Black ended, making, you know, seeing that she still has a career. Uh, but they, uh, it, the film just doesn't invest. They are all just sort of pawns, just being moved around to... Uh, advance the plot they don't ever really feel like characters nobody in this film feels like a character except for him and so by trying to push this unreliable narrator narr uh, narrative with uh giving us as little information about him as possible uh and not having us as invested in him it's an odd choice because you can tell he's a nice guy there's a nice guy in there uh, there's a nice guy who's just, he's at his breaking point. Um, yeah, puns. Um, I don't know how the real story uh, necessarily laid out. I don't know what liberties they took. But uh, 
I definitely really feel for the guy in real life. So, um, and his family and everything that they went through and, and that kind of stuff. So, um, it's, uh, kind of a somber thing, but, uh, I think, I think there's stuff to be learned from watching a film like this. Um, and I think John Boyega does deliver one hell of a performance and it's one that I'm watching who knows, may end up in my top 10 performance list at the end of the year. I don't, I don't necessarily pay attention to what other people are saying for the top 10 performances, so never have, not even what I could see. So, um, I like what I like. Uh, and I thought John Boyega here was incredible. So, uh, I just, I didn't really like the rest of the film. I didn't think the film that supported him supported him in the way that he needed to. I thought John, John was doing far too much of the heavy lifting here. Um, I felt kind of the same about Emancipation recently. I thought Will Smith was doing most of the heavy lifting of that film, too. Uh, it's... It, we You gotta have the whole product there. You can't just have one great performance and then a mediocre film. And that's how I would describe this. The audio description here is fine. Um, there's texting that goes on. So this is where I would say, uh, when we talk about the importance of, hey, blind people are people too, and we also deserve to be able to watch films. Um, there's texting that goes on in the film, and for us to be able to watch the texting uh, and understand the texting, it's uh, very important. Uh, a lot of nonverbal communication happens in this film because they can't always audibly say, even outside when they're trying to like move positions and, and get people in position for things, a lot of that is done non-verbally. So uh, we have to be able to know that people are moving into a new position, like they might be able to break into the bank or a sniper's taking a new position, um, you know, uh, whatever it is. But uh, the girls inside the bank, they communicate. He doesn't take their cell phones away. So they communicate through text messaging um, about their hopeful wish, you know, wishful thinking about escaping because they're worried they think he's a little unhinged at least one of them does the other one uh, I think sees both sides of it like he's unhinged but he also uh, I clearly I don't think wants to hurt anybody he just wants what's his it's very interesting to rob a bank and not want the money from the bank you want the money from the people who owe you the money so uh, anyway that's it so, uh, I'm going to give Breaking a C+. Plus. I didn't like the film that much. Uh, the supporting cast is fine, but they're, it's not their fault. <laughs> There's no bad acting in this film. There's just not a lot of character development. Um, there's just weird character development. Like, uh, we don't spend enough time with anybody to actually develop them as characters other than John Boyega. But John Boyega does most of the heavy lifting, and he makes the film slightly worthwhile, worth watching. So otherwise, this is just a, um, this would just be a, a random bank robbery film that nobody would remember. But John Boyega makes it memorable, and the fact that it's based on a true story makes it worth, at least, uh, worth your time if you're looking for something like this. So... Um, that's it for me. So if you could subscribe, that'd be great. I'm like 11 away from my year end goal. I would really love to hit a hundred this year. And, you know, I'm so close to my goal. I didn't even think I set that hard of a goal. I'm just so bad at getting subscribers. Um, and, uh, if you absolutely, I also have a website at themovieguy.com. Maybe the fact that I can't talk is the reason why I don't have subscribers. You can also go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org. It'll let you know what has audio description and where you can watch it. And you can go to the adna.org. That's the adna.org. It'll let you know who uh, is working on the audio description for your favorite movies and TV shows. That is it for me today. 
and I will review something else and see you on the other side.